Welcome to part two of this Football Manager 2019 experiment where I'm taking a look at a database that has flipped the English leagues around all the way down to level nine of English football. If you missed part one, please go and check that out first. Thank you for the support on part one. I'm pleased that lots of you are interested in this database and would like me to holiday a few more seasons into the future. So that is what I'm going to do. But just to remind you, you can download this database. I've put a link in the description below. And once again, thank you to Jacob who put this database together. So in this part two, I'm gonna holiday a further four seasons. So we'll be at the end of the fifth season by the end of today's video. But I thought I'd take a, a closer look at the 1920 season, the end of the second season of this experiment. Because of course, with all the, the, the leagues being flipped, we saw Hebben win the Premier League last year and qualify for the Champions League with Ballum, Witten, and Harpenden. And you'll notice that although Witten and Ballum had really terrible campaigns in the Champions League, minus 22 goal difference, they didn't score a single goal. Hebben, champions of England, won two games in the Champions League. They beat Celtic 2-1. And because they finished third, they dropped into the Europa League. So they must have signed some players to be able to win those games because I'm presuming Witten and Ballum haven't really made huge um, transfers. And that's why they've they flopped completely. Harpenden did get a draw, but they did end up with a minus 18 goal difference. They managed to draw against Zenit St. Petersburg. You'll notice, by the way, Real Madrid won the Champions League again. So the Euro Cup, how did Hebben get on in the end? So Liverpool, remember, they won the FA Cup, so qualified for the Europa League. They managed to get through to the next round. Unfortunately, Hebben lost... 4-0 on aggregate against AC Milan. Very tough team to come up against. I'm just interested to see how Liverpool got on in the end. So they they not, crashed out in the second knockout round. But of course, we also had two teams qualify for the Europa League group stages. So let's have a look at the two teams, one of which was Shrivenham, who won the League Cup. So I'm just going to scroll down. So Brackley Town Saints qualified via the Premier League. They only managed to get one draw, which was against Feyenoord. And the other team, uh, where are they? Maybe the, ah, they probably only qualified for the not uh, the group, not the group stages, the qualifying stages. I'm just going to take a look at Shrivenham. Actually, they've actually just got promoted to the Premier League. But how did they get on in the Europa League? So they lost in the Euro Cup best place playoff, unfortunately, three 0 convincing win. But they uh, six 0 aggregate, in fact. So yeah, they have they have managed to win the championship. But let's take a look at the Premier League. To start with, sorry, they finished second in the championship. They didn't win the championship, but Hebben have managed to win their second title in a row of Ilkston Town finishing second with 91 points. That's not, oh, that's two very strong performances there. K Sports, Charnock, Richard and Ballum, who of course qualified for the Champions League, relegated. What has happened to them? Well, let's have a look at Hebben first. You'll see Troy Deeney, top goal scorer in the Premier League. We've got Shakiri playing. So Abbey um, Rain, uh, what they call it, Abbey, Abbey Rangers, yeah. They must have signed a few places. Who did Hebben have then? If you spot any big names, shout them in, out in the comment section below because I won't see everyone. But standing out, Mika Richards, injury prone players signed for them. Grant Hanley, uh, they've got Stefan Daffor. Let's look at their transfers actually. So wow, loads of transfers. £51 million spent. They did sell a few players as you can see there. Um, but... The biggest transfer was actually Livakovic from Dynamo, goalkeeper for 21 and a half million. Then it's Defor. But this this team was able to win the Premier League. It shows I'm um, Timothy Weir coming in. Um, it shows that you don't they don't need to sign really, really top quality players at the moment to win the league. But eventually they will. Uh, we didn't look at their finances, did we? Let's have a quick look. So they are rich. Just stuck the in-game editor on so we can have a look at the finances in more detail. They've got a lot of money. They've got, what, £164 million in the bank. So that's all the Champions League money coming in. So next season, they should spend big. Have they got new owners? No, they don't have a sugar daddy. I presume they've still got the old owners. So Hepburn... Doing really well on this save. It'll be interesting to see if they can win three in a row. Second place, Ilkston. Thomas Christensen in charge of the club. Let's look at their transfer. So they spent £30 million. Proper coming in from Brighton. Steve Cook from Bournemouth. Joe Bryan from Fulham. Some interesting signings there. But what's happened to, to Ballum? Finishing bottom after doing so well last year. Last year they finished fourth. They are rich, but for whatever reason... They've really struggled. They only spent 1.7 million. I may it could be that they're building a stadium. 
Uh, that is a problem that we've seen in my previous database. Uh, Ballon are currently playing at Selhurst Park because, of course, there's Premier League standards. In fact, most of the teams will probably be playing at Premier League Championship clubs at the moment. So who, where are Hebben playing? They're playing at Burnley Stadium at the moment. But I'm guessing, yeah, look, they're building a stadium. And this is often the problem with with these types of experiments. The, the, the really poor teams and the teams that have been stuck into the Premier League suddenly have to build a big stadium. They don't have a fan base to fill it at the moment. They will eventually. But they have to spend huge amounts of money building a new stadium rather than signing quality players. So all of these teams will be having to build stadiums. The same with the Championship, probably League One, League Two. They're all having to build stadiums to fit the standards, the, the required standards of the Football League. Uh, anyway, Troy Deeney. How much was he signed for? So he was signed for £24.5 million. That must be one of the biggest transfers around. Let's just have a quick look. In fact, I think it is. Rashford moved to Harpenden for £24.5 million. That's amazing. I mean, that was really cheap. But remember, Man United are all the way down in the depths of English football. So he won't command such a high price. But he could move to he could move abroad, I suppose. But he's decided to stay in England and move to Harpenden. There's some big transfers here. Ben Mee, £14.25 million. Pounds. Shakiri moved from Liverpool to Abbey Rangers for, for £10 million. Reece Oxford and Endai moved to Biggleswade. <laughs> So there's plenty of money being spent. Manager movements, you can have a look at that yourself. But let's just quickly look at the championship. Then I'm going to holiday until the end of the fifth season. And we'll look at all the leagues in more detail. But Pinchbeck, didn't they have Sam Allardyce in charge? Yes. So, wow, he's uh, won the league with a record 130 points. Of course, Shrivenham have gone up as well, as have Roman Glass, St. George. There's some great names at this level, there really are. Yorkshire Amateur, Glebe and Andover New Street re relegated. We've got Chris Wood playing for Pinchbeck, moved for, for £12.75 million. Pounds. So money being spent in the championship as well. In fact, the biggest transfer... Pinchbeck, what the hell are they doing? They've spent loads of money. They've got the big, what, 10 biggest transfers, something like that. Diogo Jota moving to, from Wolves. That's the biggest transfer. That's bigger than the Premier League transfer. So Pinchbeck, watch out for them next season. They are going places, I think. They must have some money, mustn't they? Yeah, they do. 50 million? Interesting. It's no surprise why they got promoted then. FA Cup won by Man United, though, so they have qualified for the Europa League next year. They won 2-0 against Arsenal in the final. They've still got plenty of decent players here. Both teams have. Uh, the League Cup. So Harpenden beat Pinchbeck 2-1 in the final. So Pinchbeck got to a... They could have... They almost qualified for Europe in their first season back. Uh, English Community Shield. Liverpool beat Hebben 3-0. Checker Trade Trophy won by the City of Liverpool 1-0. FA Trophy won by Arsenal on penalties against Man City. Obama Young top goal scorer in this tournament. Can't see the final. So I think Man City, yep, they have got promoted for the second season in a row. I'm not entirely sure what this thing is. What division were they playing in? The Ishmian Division 1. But it, you get sort of a weird playoff thing. So Arsenal, ah, Arsenal are champions. They finished ahead of Man City. But look at the goal difference. They, only, they both only lost one game, which was against each other. 111 points. Arsenal with a plus 160 goal difference. What's, I mean, what were the results? Look at this. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Uh, there's no, no massive, massive results standing. I think the highest is 5-0, surprisingly, but they've basically won every game 5-0. Now, oh, there's 7-0, but that's in the FA Trophy. And Man City going up as well. Pep Guardiola's still in charge. So, yeah, big results. There's a few 6-0s, a couple 6-0s in there. So many goals. And who's their top goal scorer this season? 38 goals for Raheem Sterling. Arsenal 51 goals for Aubameyang. Just taking a quick look at the England team to see if there's any uh, interesting teams involved in the national team these days. Gareth Southgate, Southgate's still in charge. Uh, so we've got a couple of Harpenden plays in there, of course, because of uh, Rashford. Nicotia playing as well. But look at this, this team. Look at this squad. It is so different. Most players have moved abroad looking at this. Just do that. So Joe Hart's actually the goalkeeper still. He's moved to Pinchbeck, of course, to be with Sam Allardyce. Uh, Max Aaron's at Pinchbeck. That's that's a surprise. I mean, why is, what is this team? There's some really random players in here. Harry Kane is playing, but he's playing for PSG. How much did he move for? So he moved from Spurs for £71 million. So they 
ton of money for Spurs in the Essex Senior League, of course. There's some really random players in the England team, but also the, the actual teams involved is just so strange to see. Anyway, I'm going to holiday until the end of the fifth season now, and we'll take a look at all the leagues in detail. We'll see where all the teams are and how many Premier League teams are making their way back up towards the top. So it's now the end of the 2022-23 season. Hebben have unfortunately not been able to continue their brilliant start to this experiment. They haven't won the league since Pinchbeck. No surprise, with all that money they spent, they managed to win the league the following season and they also have won the most recent league title as well of Ilkston Town managing to win the one in between. So let's just go back in time and have a look at the last three seasons quickly. So yeah, Pinchbeck 81 points, one ahead of Ilkston Town, only just missing out again. Hebben finished down in third, Wicken and Harpenden there. So I think at this point, there's only three teams qualifying for the Champions League. Uh, Shrivenham, Russell and uh, Southall relegated. We'll just have a quick look at the rules actually, just to see how things have changed. So top two teams qualify for the Champions League group stage. That has changed from four to two in, this, in the time we've been doing this. The third position qualifies for the third best place qualifying phase. Then the fourth team for the uh, Europa Cup, Europa League, and fifth and sixth as well, depends on the FA Cup and Carabao Cup winners. But yeah, things have changed quite a bit. Um, the following season, Ilkston did finish ahead of Pinchbeck, but look how close that is. Like, a team went in the league with 69 points, so all the teams seem to have bunched together, which is good. I like the, the variety here, the, the chance that other teams can get promoted. Where did Hebben finish? They finished all the way down in 11th. So they haven't been able to sustain themselves. Benstead, Whitchurch and Woodford relegated this year. But Harpenden are doing well. Of course, they signed Rashford, remember. Witten have been up there a few times. And then the most recent season, Pinchbeck. Champions of England with Southall and Harpenden qualifying for the Champions League. Witten and Abbey Rangers qualifying for the Europa League with Hebben finishing down in 6th place. Top goal scorer, by the way. Lincoln, who... It's worth £58 million. He's playing for Witten. He signed him for £19 million. Amazing. Uh, Firmino, top average rating. He's playing for Pinchbeck. Signed for £31.5 million. Who's in charge of Pinchbeck then? So they don't have Sam Allardyce anymore. Did he actually win the league with them? He retired from management completely. So he must. He won the Premier League. Sam Allardyce won the Premier League. That is amazing. Uh, and Scott Oliver has most recently come in to win the Premier League. They must have quite a bit of money now. Four-star reputation. Let me use, won't let me use the editor for some reason, so I can't see how much money they have. We'll have a look to see what sort of transfers they've made then. So £59 million spent in that first season where they won the league. These are the big transfers. £21.5 million for Son. Then the following season, they spent £51 million. Uh, but they did sell quite a lot of players, as you can see there. And then the most recent season, £95 million spent, but they sold a lot of players as well. So they're, they're utilising their money very well, I think. Bruno Fernandes, the top signing this year, central midfielder. They've signed Firmino and Fabinho from Liverpool. What has happened to the, Liverpool, for example? I mean, they should be rising up the leagues, but and they're getting a hell of a lot of, hell of, a lot of money for their players, so they should be fine in theory. Manager movements. You can pause the video if you want to, to look in detail at things. But in the most recent season, we've seen uh, Mark Van Bommel Come in to the Premier League. Walter Mazzari. Billy Sharp. <laughs> Manager of Brackley Town Saints at the moment. I'm really interested to see the stadiums now. So, so uh, Ballam and South are both playing at Selhurst Park still. And Plymouth Parkway and Roman Gla Glass St. George are playing at Reading Stadium. But all the other teams, I think... Uh, are they new stadiums? No, Wickham playing at Gateshead. Also Woodstein and playing at... Is that... Oh, that is a new stadium, isn't it? in 2021 so they were probably playing in Walsall weren't they before but this is this is really interesting look at all these new stadiums that have been built to conform with Premier League standards fascinating down to the championship then where most recently we've seen Shrivenham get prom they're a bit of a yo-yo team aren't they up and down between the leagues uh, they've gone up with Banstead and Whitchurch I think they're a, they're both yo-yo teams as well Pat possibly Banstead relegated promoted again uh, Whitchurch being relegated previously. Oh, wow, Gattuso in charge of uh, Whitchurch. This is amazing. I love this database. We've seen Andover New Street. I think we've seen them get relegated a couple of times, haven't we? West Essex. I didn't even know there was a team called West Essex. They've been relegated. Uh, and Toughly Rovers. What a name. Let's have a look at 
the last two seasons quickly. I won't do this for all the leagues as we'd be here forever, but this is what happened three seasons ago. Plymouth Parkway promoted. Uh, this was the, the previous season and this is this season. Stadium-wise, I presume there's a lot of stadi big stadiums in this division as well, but I don't think they need to have a 12,500 seater stadium in the championship. So the biggest is Woodford's currently playing at Selhurst Park. West Essex are playing at Plough Lane. Who plays there? A few teams play. Oh, Wimbledon, of course. So they're playing at Wimbledon Stadium, where Shrivenham have built a new stadium in 2022. And that's one of the, I think that's the biggest one actually that we've seen, 12,821. This is amazing. League One then. This is what happened in the most recent season. Walsham Le Willows promoted with uh, Litherland and Silsden with Crawley Down, Cribs, Broadchurch, Heath and Saffron Walden relegated. I could have sworn this, did they? I know, they got promoted from League Two. Now they've been relegated again. Going down to League Two then. Whole, Whole Road Rangers, Corinthian, Narsborough and Cobbin promoted with Wellington and Saltdean relegated to the National League. And this is the National League then. So we've got some Premier League teams. Man City have been promoted to the Football League after losing zero games this season. They did draw a few games, but 128 points. Uh, top goal scorer for Man City, this chap. Nigerian international signed in fact Liverpool signed him uh, in real life went out on loan and Man City signed him so not quite the quality they used to uh, Patrick Bamford second top goal scorer for Arsenal as you can see this he's dropped down to the, the National League but for, for Binny I thought it I thought he'd signed for yeah yes signed for Pinchbeck in January but he had the highest average rating prior to that now I, I suspect the likes of Man City and Liverpool will get promoted to the top flight, but Bournemouth have gone up. This is this is brilliant. Bournemouth have gone up instead of Liverpool and Arsenal. I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. Darren Bent currently in charge of Bournemouth. Badshot Lee, Brockenhurst, Shaftesbury and Christchurch relegated, but the four Premier League teams predictably a long way ahead of these other teams. And they should, they, I think they probably, it just depends on their finances, doesn't it? You know, can can they hang on to enough good players? They've got a what, half a star local reputation. Are they getting people through the door? They are. So they're getting loads of people turning up for their games. But this might have only a local reputation. So they're getting a lot of money in. So they should be fine. They should be able to recover. Maybe... Uh, all the other the, the teams at the top, Pinchbeck, for example, right now might be able to get so far ahead of the likes of Man City that they will dominate England. I'm hoping that's the case. National League North, then we've seen Man United champions with Lukaku as top goal scorer, so they've still got a decent team, I reckon. Looking at this, uh, they've got Fred, they've got Paul Pogba. He's on 250k a week in non-league football. In fact, Alexis Sanchez on £400,000 a week in non-league. That's hilarious. Leicester promoted as well. Newcastle, Huddersfield and Stoke failing to get promotion. National League South won by Chelsea. Five points ahead of Crystal Palace. who went up via the playoffs with Southampton finishing third. So only three real-life Premier League teams in this division at the moment. Uh, Alexander Soloth, top goal scorer for Crystal Palace. He's still playing there. Kante still playing for Chelsea, earning 300k a week. Going down to the Northern Premier League, which is the seventh tier of English football. Sunderland champions promoted to the National League North. Only one team going up from this division. Uh, Spurs went up from the English Southern League Premier Central. Bit of a mouthful, that division. They didn't lose a single game. They only drew one game, which was against Hamworth. They finished fourth. The English Southern League Premier South won by Swansea with Preston going up via the playoffs. I think two teams go up from... I think there's four different uh, divisions and two teams go out go up via the playoffs. So Preston were one of the teams that was successful. Swansea, plus 100 goal difference, didn't lose a single game. And the English Ishmael League Premier Division, won by Brighton with Luton also going up via the playoffs. Interesting. So Luton finished ahead of Watford. Luton might do okay in this, actually. We'll have to see in a few years. So I'm going to release part three tomorrow. I'm going to holiday another five seasons to see what happens. This is the Northern Premier Division 1, which has a weird playoff system with, with the other leagues. So Peter and Oxford promoted ahead of Cardiff. We are in, I think this is the eighth tier now, isn't it? Um, this is the Northern Premier Division 1. Middlesbrough promoted as champions. Everton all the way down is sixth. Then we've got the Division 1 Central, Crow Alexandra champions of this one. 
Division 1 South Shrewsbury and Exeter getting promoted. And the Ish English Ishmian North Division, Ipswich and Barnet getting promoted at Colchester. I think this is still the eighth tier of English football. Uh, Sheffield United and Burton promoted from this division. Rotherham missing out. And then Fulham promoted from this division with Bromley, head of Gillingham. Now we're into the ninth tier of English football. So this is where all the real life football league teams essentially started. So Wimbledon promoted this year from the Combined Counties Premier, head of Tranmere Rovers. Then we've got the Eastern Counties Premier, which Norwich managed to win. Uh, the Eng English Essex Senior League, Leighton Orient Champions, just ahead of Stalybridge. So all of the real life top teams have got out of that oh south end stuck there though uh swindon won the H H hellenic league head of reading two points head of reading so they're still stuck birmingham still stuck in this division english midland football league kidderminster champions walsall still stuck in this division we've then got blackpool winning the northwest counties premier head of Rochelle. burnley still stuck a real life premier league team stuck in the bottom tier the ninth tier they've got obscure reputation secure finances i don't know why the editor's not working for me so we can't see how much money they've got. But let's have a look. At, I mean, they've spent 26 k this year. Nothing in the previous years. They sold £16 million worth of players. They've, they've basically sold all their players, haven't they? £61 million worth of players in that se second season going out of the club. They've got rid of pretty much everyone, I'd imagine. If you're a Burnley fan, you might recognise a few players here. Maybe some youngsters. But it's not gone well for Burnley, that's for sure. Then we've got the Northern Counties East Premier with Grimsby getting promoted. English Northern League Division 1. Sutton getting promoted. So, now this is the, the re, was the really tough league. And it looks like my team West Ham were the last ones to get promoted. Uh, the last sort of proper really good football league team. I don't, oh, Crawley, they're a football league team. They're stuck there. Maidenhead, I can't remember which division. I think they're in the National League, aren't they? So yeah, it's just West Ham and Crawley, the football league teams that have failed to get out up until this point. So West Ham have gone up. But they might have had, it's probably had an impact on their finances. Okay, finances, obscure reputation. Probably similar to Burnley and having to sell a lot of players. £25 million going out this year. Reese Oxford and, and, and Tony Nasri, Winston Reid only just sold, oh, that was the 1920 season, sorry. So £50 million. Yeah, they, they were the, the team that sold a lot of their players in that first season. And you'd have thought, well, money wise, they should be okay. But, I mean, Philippe Anderson went to Witten for £13.5 million. Anatovic went to Besiktas. It was in 21-22 season. A lot more players going out then. And most recently, £6 million worth of players leaving the club. Yarmolenko finally sold. He was still playing up until this point for West Ham in the ninth tier of English football. Attendance-wise, it's still a 50,000 people turning up for a ninth tier match. It's very impressive. Loyal West Ham fans. That is amazing, really. And, of course, taking over two, basically 2,500 people to away matches as well. That's amazing. 10,000 away fans at the Wimbledon game. Half the state. That is incredible, really. Uh, but, yeah, they've only just got promoted. How many more are there to go? Wrexham promoted from... The, there's so many divisions. There really are. Could be here all day if I showed every single season in detail. But it is fascinating stuff. Stephen is promoted from this one. We've got the United Counties League. Coventry getting promoted. Uh, head of Northampton. And AFC Fylde. Champions of the, the Wessex League. Head of Eastleigh. Salford playing in this this league randomly. Uh, they've they've got stuck, haven't they? Salford down at this level, which is a bit of a surprise, really. Thought they'd go up. And is this the last one? I think so. Plymouth promoted from the Western League. Yeah, there we go. So the FA Cups in recent years, they've been won. By these interesting teams, Pinchbeck beat Ilkstone Town in the 21 Cup, Wickham beat Plymouth Parkway and Rains Park beat Wickham in 2023 with Mark Van Bommel in charge of the club, of course. League Cup wise, we've seen half, wow, the, wow this is amazing. So, of course, oh yeah, because there's no traditional football league teams in this competition, but Shrivenham won the first one, Harpenden, Wickham, uh, Walsall Wood. And Harpenden. Harpenden have done really well. They've had plenty of spent plenty of money, haven't they? Key player still Marcus Rashford. And is that James Milner still playing at the age of 37? Vice captain of this team. Let's just go back. Spent they've spent plenty of money, haven't they? They really have. £94 million that season. They've bought Renato Sanchez from Bayern Munich. 
This is incredible. Three and a half star reputation team. They've been the most consistent, I think. They haven't won the league, but they've pretty much, well, they've finished in the top five every single season. And this year they finished third. So they've done really well. Uh, they didn't qualify. Oh, they did qualify for Europe this year. Let's have a look at Europe. They actually got through to the, the first, second, or quarter final, semi final. Oh, they got through. Pinchbeck. Oh, wait. This is interesting. Pinchbeck got through to the final this year and lost against Sevilla. That is incredible from Pinchbeck. So unlucky. They lost 1 0 in the final. Kieran Trippier playing for Pinchbeck with Fabinho, Son, Firmino, Will Hughes. What a team. Diego Jota on the bench. Uh, Champions League. We've not seen any surprises here. Real Madrid have absolutely dominated, haven't they? But I wonder how they got on in the most recent season in the group stages, the English team. So, oh, Elston Town qualified for the knockout round. Pinchbeck dropped down. That's how they got into the Europa League. They dropped down into it. Uh, and Witten also qualified. So we've got two teams going through to the first knockout round where... Uh, Witten lost against Bayern Munich 5 0 on aggregate, and Ilkston Town lost 7 2 on aggregate against PSG. But still, th there's a bit of improvement here from these teams. The England team, so there's some familiar names in there. Jordan Pickford in, in goal, but he plays for Ilkston Town. We've got Trent Alexander Arnold playing for PSG, John Stones for Witten. This is a, a much more better looking uh, England team, isn't it? Eric Dyer, Max Aaron's still there. Uh, Raheem Sterling playing for Ilkston, Delhi Ali playing for Ilkston. Ross Barkley playing for St Etienne, Marcus Rashford playing for Harpen and still Callum Wilson playing for Witten. This is amazing. Love it. There's no traditional English league clubs in here. They're all either non-league English teams who are now currently playing in the Premier League, of course, or uh, teams in Europe. But there's there's far fewer teams in Europe now involved in this. So a lot of these players, I mean, M Mason Greenwood, moved from Man United to Spurs and then to Ballum. 110k, what a bargain. Harry Maguire, playing for Sampdoria, moved for £10.5 million, but only recently, only in the recent season, Jordan Henderson moved from Liverpool to Reigns Park for £34 million. We're starting to see the transfer fees go up as well as these teams have more money, better reputation. They can afford these quality players. Uh, Danny Plum, currently manager of, of England, by the way. Let's see what's happened in recent years. So Southgate resigned. What's happened in the World Cup? So Brazil managed to win it. England finished third in the 2022 World Cup. Uh, the Euros, uh, France beat Belgium in 2020. I'm interested to see, actually, looking at facilities of Harpenden, for example, have they spent money? Yeah, they have. So they've spent money on a state-of-the-art youth facilities. Uh, they've only got ab above average youth recruitment. These things will improve, but I think these teams will start to, to, to bring through good players. Sean Allen. Looks good, currently on loan. But yeah, they, they will produce decent players over time because they will improve their youth facilities, youth academies, etc. And hopefully they'll be able to compete with the likes of Man City's youth academy. In fact, do Man City still have a state-of-the-art youth academy? Have they been able to spend money on that? They've got superb youth facilities, but I presume that is below state-of-the-art, which Harpen didn't have. They've still got superb training facilities. I'm, I'm guessing they're still spending a lot of money on stuff. They're not having to spend much money on transfers. Oh, actually, they have. £55 million. They bought Roberto Pereira from Watford. So they're able to attract players despite the fact they're playing in the National League. They're going to be playing in League 2 next year. I imagine Man City will rise to the top and then challenge the likes of Harpenden and Pinchbeck in the future. Got a bit sidetracked. We'll just quickly go down and have a look at these. So these are the Community Shield winners. Hebben, Ilkston and Wickham in recent years. Check a trade trophy. Won by Stockton Town. Langley under 23s because of course they must have been a Premier League team. So they had to uh, use their under 23s. That's that's amazing. Um, and then the FA Trophy. So we've got Saffron Walden winning it the first year, but then Arsenal beat Man City, Chelsea beat Southampton and Liverpool, and then Man United beat Watford 3-0 in the most recent final. Fred, Sanchez and Martial with the goals. Uh, the Now we're down to the regional competitions. I'll just quickly go down them. You can see the winners on the right-hand side there. Southern League Cup, Spurs, Liverpool. Shouldn't be taking part in that. Um, the Ishmael League Cup, those are the winners. English FA Vars, 
So Grimsby won the most recent one, beating Port Vale in the final. We've seen Shrewsbury, Bristol City, Brighton and Arsenal win it so far in this experiment. Well, player of the year then. So Sané won it in 2019, playing for Bayern Munich. So he obviously signed for, for them. And Harry Kane moved to PSG with Messi finishing third. Then Ronaldo managed to win it again while I was playing for Juventus. For Eden Hazard at Bayer Leverkusen, he managed to win it. So they signed him on a free when his contract was up at Chelsea. And he won World Player of the Year. Uh, Florian Thalvin managed to win it. This That's a pretty big surprise. I mean, he's a good player, but that is surprising. With Firmino second whilst playing for Pinchbeck. This is what I wanted to see. Wow. Love it. Uh, there's also the World Golden Ball. I think this is the, the actual Ballon d'Or. So similar winners. Lacazette second. Eden Hazard won it. Salah playing for Real Madrid. And most recently Firmino second place in this as well. Um, World Player of the Year. Well, team of the year. Have we got any... Pin there's pinch bet. There's Firmino. Anyone else in here? Don't think so. But over time, we might see some more. Heben. Bernardo Silva. Didn't notice he was playing for Heben. But there we go. Me for £36.5 million from Man City. One of the best players in the world. Team of the year. Playing for Heben. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Love it. Goalkeeper of the year. There's a, a Rustle player. Kepa. Third place. The guy's playing for PSG. Uh, there's Neuer, Edison, Courtois, no, no massive surprises there. In fact, now we can have a look at the finances. So I've only loaded England, so we can only see this. But let's have a look at the turnover. So Man City and Man United, Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool, the traditional top six teams in England still have the biggest turnover in England despite playing in non-league football. <sighs> but just imagine, just imagine if this was true and we had... You had people, you saw things on Twitter, you saw YouTube videos, Harpenden TV, for example, or, you know, you, you, you heard of there being a, a real massive support for Pinchbeck in Thailand or somewhere like that. I'd just, that would just be amazing. And they come over to this little village. I mean, Pinchbeck, I've just Googled, it's a village in Lincolnshire. It has a population of 5,000 people and they're... One of the best teams in England. Ah, oh, amazing. Their stadium's bigger than their population. By, by more than double. And that would be the case with a lot of these teams. Heaven's a bit bigger. It's a small town, 16,000 people. But still, this is just so, so brilliant. I'm just going to scroll down so you can see. Um, all the way down to 100. Burton, currently at the bottom there. But there's a lot of teams missing from this, I imagine. Um, season ticket holders so oh it does show Europe for this see West Ham are up there in 8th place despite playing in the ninth tier of English football that is truly incredible this is the reputation of, of the club so the highest English reputation team is actually Pinchbeck with 3.5 stars by the looks of it or oh, the 4 stars this season they've gone up to national reputation I think that's the highest and then it's Heb uh, then it's Ilkston, and then it's Heaven. There's the national rankings. The league. So the English Premier League has dropped down to fourth, but it's still quite high up considering the circumstances. And I think over time it will gradually improve again. But I think we'll end it there. Thank you for watching part two of this experiment. Some really interesting stories here. I love the fact that Pinchbeck are doing really well, and it was because of Sam Allardyce getting them promoted and then winning the league with them amazing i uh, hope you enjoyed it if you if you did please leave a like on this video part three will be out tomorrow i hope hopefully it'll be out tomorrow and i'm going to holiday a further five seasons into the future until next time enjoy fm19 enjoy the rest of your day see you very soon